Welcome everybody. We'll get started in just a few seconds. We'll let everybody get situated. Right. Okay, we have a few more joining. We'll get started in just a few seconds. So glad you could all join us today for the preparing students for APCSP exam. Welcome, welcome. I see a lot of familiar names. Hello, everybody. It's great to see you all here. Okay, a couple of things. So um, because this is a webinar format, um, you won't be able to unmute um, or actually display your video, but you do have chat. And uh, hi, Nancy, <laughs> I'm just checking out chat. Um, so you can definitely <clears throat> send messages to all of us in chat. You can also click on the Q&A button and uh, ask any questions that you might have. Um, so go ahead right now and you can actually go to chat and you can certainly introduce yourself. We'd love to know where you're coming from and what you're teaching and uh, why you decided you might need to come today. Hi, Mark. It's great to see you again. Ah, you're doing IB instead of AP. Excellent. Yeah, for sure. I know I always like to stay up on AP as well. <clears throat> I feel like things change so much from year to year and especially, <clears throat> excuse me, especially with the last few years that we've had where everything was so different, it definitely changes all the time. So, so glad you could be here with us today. All right. And we are also going to toss an attendance link into chat. Um, and so when you have a moment, if you could go ahead and click that, I'm just gonna grab that link real quick, maybe. Hello, Ray, Ray's joining us from South Carolina. Awesome, APCSP and game design, love game design. Thrilled that you're teaching that. Well, thanks, Linda. Um, Linda just tossed the attendance link into chat for us. So when you have a moment, go ahead and click on that attendance link. And that is going to go ahead and just note that you are here. All it's going to collect is your name and that's it. And it lets us send you a certificate of participation for this webinar. So you will definitely want to click that attendance link. All right, we have a lot of introductions coming in. Welcome, welcome Erica, welcome Bobby, welcome Shannon, welcome Emily, welcome Gary. Awesome, we have people joining us from all over the place. Love it, this is great. We'll go ahead and toss that link in there again. Yep, it's getting a little bit mixed in with the introduction. So we'll go ahead and toss that in one more time. Well, let me find it. Ah, I see it. There you go, all right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I think we've settled down a little bit. And so let's go ahead and kick off our webinar for today. Uh, so again, welcome everybody. So glad you could join us. In addition to the uh, attendance link, you can also access the slides that we're going to be using today um, by either scanning that QR code or by browsing out to codehs.com slash apcsp prep slides. And uh, you'll be able to access all those slides. We'll also make sure that the slides are sent out uh, in the follow-up email after this webinar. Um, and just another quick note, since this is a webinar, everybody is muted already. Um, we actually have you all muted and um, you're not, uh, you won't be displaying your video today. So you are all good. I appreciate had a few messages, um, from a few people just saying, Hey, I want to make sure I'm muted. Thank you. I appreciate that, but feel free to throw any questions that you might have into that Q and A area 
and you can always use the chat too. All right, uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, so if you don't have a, a CodeHS account just yet, and I have a feeling we, that most of you are CodeHS teachers, but just in case we have uh, some who are joining us for the first time and you need an educator account, you can browse out to this URL that's on the screen. Uh, you'll wanna browse out to codehs.com slash sign up. Linda just tossed that into chat for us. Perfect. And it'll take just a minute to sign up for that account and uh, we can get you going pretty quickly, but you won't need that today. Today will be a great time to just uh, probably sit back and listen. You maybe follow a few links as well. Okay, awesome. Looking at chat again. Okay, cool. Use Code HS for cybersecurity. Well, I'm very excited that you do use uh, Code HS for cyber. Cyber classes happen to be one of my favorites, but I was also did use AP uh, or use Code HS for APCSP as well. So hopefully we can give you show you some of the cool resources that we have today. All right, uh, Charnel, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so in today's workshop, we are going to be we're going through our welcome and introductions right now. Um, we're going to talk just a little bit about the AP test, go over a few APCSP review materials and resources, and then talk about some of the strategies uh, that uh, that are available to prepare students for the APCSP exam. And we'll do all this before we wrap things up. Now, instead of just having members of the Code HS team uh, to talk about APCSP, what we decided to do was to bring in one of our Code HS uh, educators who also happens to be a teacher trainer. So I am very excited to bring you Charnel Woolidge. She is going to be presenting on uh, the APCSP exam, some of the Code HS resources, and talking about some of her strategies that she uses with her students. So Charnel, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to you. All right. Thank you, Lori. Sounds great. Hi, everyone. I'm going to start off with the AP score breakdown for the AP test. Um, for this year, the AP test for computer principles is Wednesday, May 4th. And um, the end of the course, multiple choice exam, there are two parts to the AP test. There's a multiple choice, which is 70 questions. You get 120 minutes. And that is 70% of the score. In the past, um, the test did have what they called an explore task in addition to the uh, create task. They did eliminate the explore task. And now there are the 57 single select multiple choice questions. And there are five single select reading passage questions. What that is, is they give you a reading and the students need to read over that and answer questions based on that information in the reading. And there's also eight multiple select, multiple choice questions. So they read the question and they have to select two answers for eight of the questions, which make up the 70. Um, if you have any questions as we go through that, you can put them in that Q&A or in the chat, but we're going to go through and break this down even further um, for the test. The five big ideas, there used to be seven, but now they're, they've broken it down to five. So the big ideas covered on the test and their weighting is on this slide for big idea number one is uh, creative development. That's 10 to 13%. And big data is 17 to 22%. Your algorithms and programming, that's going to make up 30 to 35% of the AP test. So that's a large uh, portion. Algorithms, and creative development, those two make up about 50% of the test. Then you have your computer systems and network and your impact of computing, that's 21 to 26. 
So a lot of these skills in the AP test are practiced in their coding exercises as they go through the course. All right. The create task, as what was mentioned earlier, this task, the test is two parts, the 70 questions and the create task, which is 30% of the score. Your uh, multiple choice is 70% of their score. So this create performance task, a lot of the um, students really like doing this and it includes a written program of their choice and it can be in Scratch, JavaScript, Python, Java, you know, the, the software that they are familiar with. But what they need to do is they create the code. They have a video explanation of a significant part of that program running. And there is a written document that goes along with that. Um, they get 12 hours of in-class time to complete this creative task. And students can also work on it outside. Um, they can work on it individually or with a partner. The teacher, however, this is the tricky part. You as the teacher cannot help the students with this create task. You are the facilitator and you keep them going so they can meet their deadline, which this year is, I believe it's May 2nd. This one is usually due prior to their multiple choice. And it's an Eastern standard time, not your, um, my time zone here is central time zone. So when I told the students that they're like, oh, we have to hand it in an hour ahead of time <laughs> to make the Eastern time. Um, but you guide them through this create task and make sure that you keep them on task and the deadline post. So once your students have started that administration of their create PT, the College Board does have several standards or rules, so to speak that are very important that the students have to follow. Otherwise their test may not be graded and show up as part of their score. So they cannot seek assistance in writing, amending, correcting work. They cannot come up to you and say, will you check this to see if it's okay? Or I have a problem with this and the teachers cannot debug the program. Um, or help the student make any revisions at all. Um, you cannot revise it, upload it, then revise it and upload it again. And it's just, it's tough as a teacher and for the performance task, it's tough being able to see an error or let them know. And the students, you can't give them any feedback. Um, those college board, another good idea, a strategy that I use when it comes to the create task is if I can get to the link here, is they have a handouts that you can give the students on the college board site. And these handouts I share, um, I show them, they're on the college board site. The students can access them. It has all of the information in there for the kids. So it tells them the code, um, what they can do, what they can't do. It gives them the vocab. Um, and it's a huge um, asset to the kids. It gives them guidelines, um, talks about plagiarism and different things. So I make sure that the students are given that at the beginning, but then I also bring it back when they're starting to the to work on that performance task. All right, moving on um, with the performance task. Now we talk, uh, I'm gonna touch on a little bit more about the dates. All right, Monday, May 9th, 
12 p.m. local time is the lucky day for the principal's exam. And they get 120 minutes. Again, we saw that earlier um, for the 70 questions, the multiple choice. And that includes the five uh, reading questions and the eight dual select questions. The create task submission is May 22nd at 1159 Eastern Standard Time. I highly recommend that you bump that up. As a teacher, I tell my students, I make them, you know, say I give them the week ahead of time. That way they they know for sure because everybody under the sun could be uploading this at 1158 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the system, it's, they may take a chance of risking not getting that in on time. Um, so again, if they wait till the last minute, it may not get in. And they do need to upload those three parts, their program, their video, and their written questions. And uh, that in, that's the 30% of their, their score. So now some of us are probably wondering, okay, where are all these resources at that I can get? Code HS has what they call, and this is all brand new and that's really cool. This is the Code HS um, APCSP hub. And this is awesome. Um, this is the resource hub and all of the resources are free to the AP teachers. And there's so much info out there that helps the students prepare. I mean, I've just been loading Google Classroom um, for these kids and sharing documents and um, giving them all the information in their hands that they can have to help them be better with this test. The first tab on here is the curriculum tab. And that will take you to the choices of curriculum the Python, cybersecurity, or JavaScript. Um, it also gives you this pathway. I know that's not part of the strategy, but it, it puts you kind of in there. So if kids, kids want to know when is a good time for them to take the principal's test. Um, there's tutorials in there, but this one right here, QOTD is question of the day. And the question of the day is you can go in and sign up and have Code HS email you a question of the day. And this is awesome. I tell my students this, as soon as they come into class, they click on the link and they test themselves with this question of the day. And um, we can access it here, maybe. Um, there we go. So here's today's question of the day. They can answer it and then they can check their answer. And you have arrows that'll take you back in the earlier days. So they can go all the way back. I think this one goes to April 1st. Um, April 4th is when it started. Um, so these are really good uh, review and study strategies um, that they have developed. Um, I think, oh, there we go. I need to hit this one <laughs> to go back. And it's going to take me all the way back, isn't it? All right. Another strategy for the teachers is you can check the blogs. This gives you um, teaching tips and um, tricks for helping the kiddos do well on their AP test. There's uh, teaching tips here, and there's how to keep students engaged and kind of go through, and it covers the rules, regulations, or not regulations, but different strategies for giving that test out and ideas to help the kids prepare for the test. So that is, that's awesome. I have that coming to me every day and then I share that link 
for the question of the day to the kids and um, have given them a create task folder and everything has been put in that folder for them. So they've got something to refer to as they are headed through this adventure. All right, we've got a lot of resources for the AP uh, Computer Science Principles Test. There's an in-course review and that in-course review, I'm gonna close that so I don't open that again. Um, is the AP Computer Science exam review and that's inside Code HS. And this has reference sheet. The students are given um, a reference sheet that has all kinds of hints on it for the kids. They get that when they take the test. And so they've got that there to help guide them through the test, but there are quizzes and um, practice questions. And there's also a reader bank. And that reader question bank is where the Code HS, or not Code HS, AP readers have put together questions that they feel will help the students be successful on the test, different practice questions. Or you can also put in your own questions into Code HS. So as we go through, um, we're gonna take another look at the in-course practice. I know I kind of got carried away with that, but we'll go back here. All right, so the in-course practice in Code HS, let's see. Oh, I bet I can't pull it up. It's gonna take me forever. <laughs> Whoops. All right, in Code HS, during, for your classes, you have um, in-course AP practice questions that you can put up there. And you can also access the Code HS question bank through Code HS. And that is, let's see if I can find, I'm not logged in, am I? Lori, do you have that open? Um, I'll go ahead and try to pull that up. Or should I see if it'll quick? It's open on my other side, not this one. See if it'll let me log in here real quick. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so. If you have your computer science, um, AP computer science principles in a class, you've got all of the courses, the units listed. And then at the bottom is AP exam review. I believe this needs to be added though. Is that right? So what you can do to get that is in the course content, you would, there's a button. Oh, let's see. Yeah, from the, from the teacher view, if you need to add anything, you can always go to the assignments page from oh. your section. Thanks, I was in student view. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't find it. Right over here you have the, the button that you can add content. And then you would search for the, um, the class, the AP review. And that is, that's another awesome tool, um, giving those practices, practice AP exams is what the students need they need to be able to time themselves and because they have 60 minutes to answer 70, no, nope, 120 minutes, 70 questions. Um, we're gonna talk more about that as we um, get through this, but these all help tie in the learning and how the students are gonna see 
what the questions will look like on the AP exam. So it's important that the language that they're choosing for their AP um, performance task that they're familiar with and the language JavaScript or Python. So that way they know how to translate the questions and um, throughout the test. All right. The in-course practice exam, and that's just what I was on um, a little bit ago. That's a full length practice exam. And that contains 70 questions and it's updated with the 2020 um, questions for practice. The latest one out, um, I believe is the, for Code HS is 2020. Um, when, we'll talk about some more resources as we get towards the end, and then I'll bring that back. All right, Code HS, um, Computer Science Principles Review Course. There is also, that is the one that I had open earlier with the reference sheet that the kids get and the different parts for the quizzes. You can go through and pull out, um, let's see, there's what, 15 questions and different activities. And all of these are from what you go through in the course. So it helps those kids with that part. And we have, again, this is the exam review and hundreds of practice questions out there. Um, in the question bank, you can go in through Code HS and you can select your own questions to put together um, from the, the questions in the question bank. And um, that way you can have it your own or independent based on what you have been covering. I go by units. I first start out and give them when we cover a unit, then I'll give them questions from that unit as a practice test. Then we move to the next one. And um, then I will, as we build on, I continue putting questions from the previous unit in with the second one. So they're still getting it's kind of a rolling effect until they get down to the end. Then they get all different 70 questions and it's mixed up. And um, it's, it's based on your class, I believe. Like, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. <laughs> all right, back to the AP reader questions. Um, those are from the AP readers, the AP test readers. There's a full question bank out there for you to choose questions from. And that is where we have this part right here. And you can go in and um, choose these questions from that question bank or go in and add your own based on the unit, as I said earlier. That is some of the strategies I use to is pulling in those questions. Because if they're, if they're the test readers, um, they've seen what the questions look like and know how to help prepare the students for taking that test without giving too much information away. All right, here are the steps to get to your question bank. When you're in Code HS, um, you can click on the toolbox. This is in my way. Right up here at the beginning of your, um, when you get into Code HS and you have all of your sections there, you can click on the toolbox. And then right down here, 
is a quiz question bank underneath create. So you can then click on that quiz question bank and then select, you've got a filter. You can pick which questions you want, the level of difficulty, what language you would like those questions to be in. And um, then you can filter that and the questions will pop up. There are also the questions from others that are listed here. These are the AP readers questions. And um, like this one here is on recursion, all of our favorite topics. Um, this one has JavaScript and it's about programming style. So there are many, many questions that cover many different topics. Um, these don't help with learning the pseudocode per se, but they help with the types of questions the students are going to see on that AP test in those 70 multiple choice questions. All right, now coming up um, is some other AP resources. We have the practice exams. Um, this is from the College Board. They have all kinds of practice exams at the College Board Central. They have daily videos, quiz questions, and different assignments. So what your students would do is go into AP Classroom and register for an account. And you would have access as a teacher for that as well. And um, these are some external resources that I use. You can go into AP Computer Science Principles class and you can choose which unit, right? And you can filter those as well, right down to what unit or topic that you, or big idea that you want your students to cover. And you can assign these in AP Classroom as well and provide them a link. You can give them the date and the time that they need to have them. And um, those questions are pushed out to the students. They can go in and take those whenever they, they want to, as long as they're within that time slot that you've set. There are some other educator groups that you can use within the College Board. There's the AP Community, um, listservs, and um, Facebook. Code HS has their Facebook. You can follow them on Twitter. Um, AP Community, that's really good to get all kinds of information. Um, in your email about what's happening with the code HS, or I'm sorry, with the AP principles test. Getting my words mixed up here. <laughs> and so reach out, reach out to them um, and ask for hints, ideas, other strategies. My strategies change from year to year based on my students in my class. Um, this year, my students wanted to do everything on their own, um, meaning they wanted to do their performance test by themselves. They did not want to do pair programming. So um, even though we did some partner work, so they still had the collaboration part, but they would collaborate. We would work together on some activities and assignments as we went through, but um, it's personal preference sometimes for the students. Um, so here are some of my AP CSP strategies. I have this from the College Board. This is right from the College Board. And I gave this link to my students. They can see it. Here is the link to this, the Computer Science Principal student handouts that we showed earlier. The about the exam page, making sure you let the students know what the test is going to be about. That's a huge strategy. They need to know what it's going to be about, what the percentage is of what section, so they can plan their time and time management. 
Um, I know this sounds overwhelming for them. That's why I start it with the beginning of the year. And then I slowly bring it back as we hit the performance task and we get closer. So it's not so overwhelming to them. Um, exam day specifics, just got done saying that. Unit or big idea practice questions. So at the end of each unit, or once you've covered a big idea, throw in some questions there. Whether it's five questions, 10 or 15, throw in some questions. Partner review and collaboration. Um, have them question or quiz each other. Um, some students like to make quizlets that they can make their own and think of questions to ask, even if it's a simple vocab, because vocab is important when it's coming to this because that those terms are needed for their create task as well. Um, have, the whoops, have the students time themselves. How long does it take them to answer a question? Um, because they have to get 70 questions in 120 minutes. And so if they're spending too much time on one question, then they need to go back and maybe review that big idea or get some more additional practice on that. So I have my students, as we get closer to the test, start timing themselves when they go through that. The question of the day, um, give students practice questions to, um, and, and the correct answers. I've done this before where I give them the question. They can answer it. If they miss it, then they get the answer and then they can analyze, they can see why they have to look it up and why they chose what they did and why that answer was labeled that way. Um, it kind of just helps them out, gets them a, a little bit deeper. Um, some external resources. Um, that we have in addition to CSP, College Board. Um, I use the Barron's book. Um, that's a great resource for the kids. They can purchase that on their own. Um, that's an external resource. It's not, uh, it is College Board um, and it's not through Code HS but that is an external resource that can be used um, as well. And it has a lot of practice tests and a lot of questions um, in there. Here are some important resources that are needed as well for the digital portfolio, the student handouts once again, and the scoring guidelines um, once again. All right. Um, hey, Charnel, we thank you yeah, so hey. much. All right, so thank you so much, Charnel, for going over all of that information. Um, we have had uh, a few questions in chat uh, and for just a few demos. And so while you were uh, going through your presentation, Charnel, uh, Linda was actually pulling up a few things and we'll have Linda go ahead and share her screen. So, Charnel, I'll have you go ahead and stop sharing. Okay. Yeah, and some of these features are brand new. So we're so excited that you're here because a lot of this is like rolled out like just a couple of weeks ago. So here we go. I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to share my screen. First, I want to show you what it looks like when I'm looking at things from a teacher view, and then I'll show you what it looks like from the student's view. So the question of the day, you know, once you've subscribed and, and Charnel kind of showed you, you know, you can just simply uh, click your answer. Of course, I'm not looking at the question right now, but once you hit check and get, oh my goodness, I got it right. Um, once you've answered, um, students will be able to see kind of like a little dashboard that'll show them their streak of how many questions they've uh, gotten right. But, um, I had some questions pertaining to, you know, how can we add the review questions? So we know question of the day, but how can we add the review questions or the review course um, that includes not only the questions that have been created um, 
by code HS and also from previous tests that have been administered, but also those AP reader question bank questions. So if you uh, see your course, I'm in here now as a teacher, but I can add any sort of uh, additional courses or additional materials to my course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on code HS content and I can search for, I usually just search for review and then both the CSA and CSP pop up. So I'm just gonna choose CSP. I can choose either the exam review questions and I'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of expand this to show you. There's two full, you know, kind of uh, quiz question banks that are kind of gonna populate here as well as the exam reference sheet. And then um, for, those um, re reader bank questions, you're going to see you can choose those quizzes as well. But I'm going to go ahead and select them all. I can choose individual ones if I'd like to, but I'm going to assign those selected questions. It'll think for a minute, but really what it's doing is it's adding it to the end of my course. Now you can, of course, uh, move that wherever you'd like to, but you can see um, now at the very bottom of my course, I've got the review questions, I've got the questions um, from the reader bank. And so you can see all these individual short quizzes that you could assign. You could even move those to maybe another module if you'd like to, or you can move them around. So if I screw, uh, uh, if I scooch up here to the very top, I can uh, now have the ability to kind of move these wherever I'd like. So if I want to move them before the final, it would probably be a better place for them, things like that. So um, another thing that I can do, um, and I can click done here at the bottom, there are some additional course materials that are just built in as supplements. So if you need some additional things, like let's say um, your course needed, uh, maybe this is better for next year, but a midterm, um, you may add additional performance tasks or sample performance tasks right here at the bottom. You just click assign and boom, it's in your course. Now, the only thing with this, of course, it's gonna end up at the bottom. So if you'd like to move it to a different section, you can certainly do that. So um, that's kind of what that looks like. Wanted to show you real quick though, um, where are my Zoom controls? Okay, there we are. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share what it looks like from the student's end. So here is the student's end. Do you see this? Um, I enrolled myself in my own course just now just to check what would happen. Students don't need to do any kind of email um, updates because it automatically populates their console. So right here at the top, you see take today's question of the day. I can click on it. I can you know read the question, choose the right answer. And then it gives me, you know, kind of a quick check correct. Um, and uh, at the bottom here, you can see, you know, how this relates to maybe the other students in your course. Then, um, in addition, if I want to, um, you know, subscribe to the emails, when I first go to the question of the day um, screen and you're the students are going to be able to see this. So it says subscribe here if they wanted to get an email to remind them, that's great. Or if they just simply are going to go right into their Code HS dashboard, they're going to see it at the top. So either one. The reason that teachers need to have, uh, you know, get those email updates, so they're going to need to subscribe, is because they don't necessarily see the things that the students see. Um, so that bar across the top is showing up for them. But in order for you to see it, you may want to sign up for the email updates. Is that answering their questions? So we got we kind of went over two things. One is the review course. How do you add that? And then the second one is, you know, question of the day. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and check chat. I'm not seeing any other questions just yet. If anybody has questions, now is a great time to toss those either into chat or into the Q&A. That's great. I saw some questions about the Barron's book. Um, I did, you know, utilize some resources. Um, I would also lean heavily on those tutorials too, to help with any kind of coding skills leading up to the uh, performance task. If there are any kind of skills gaps, those are really helpful in just even getting the cre creativity going. Um, also those supplements, the performance task, um, those, uh, those additional supplements that um, help them to do a sample performance task may be uh, helpful too, to come up with ideas and just kind of run through the rubric before they have to do the real thing. 
and we had a question in Q&A. Can I assign the questions in Google Classroom? Charnel, you use Google Classroom, correct? Yes, I do. Um, for Google Classroom, I um, just, uh, let me pull up Code HS here. If I wanted to assign a question on the questions, um, for example, if we choose a specific assignment, there are the three dots and I'm in the wrong spot. Um, it's because it popped back to a student again. So for example, if I have computer science principles, oh, wrong one. Um, are you able to have, share your screen? Oh, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> I forgot that it wasn't shared. Sorry about that, folks. All right. How's this? Is this a little better? Perfect. Um, what um, we can do is when you go to a specific lesson on the less, whoops, the lessons, there are the three dots. And you can copy the link. I don't know if I can get into one here. Um, and that's what I do as I go in and. I think you're in the student view, but if you're I, in the teacher uh, view. Yeah, it keeps yeah. switching me back. Um, I don't have any assignments in this one. Actually, if you go ahead to that demo section, oh, oh yeah, that one works too. Go ahead and go up to your okay. assignment tab. All yeah, right. If you click on assignments up at the top, that'll yeah. be the that'll be the perfect place to go to grab those links. There we go. I don't know why I was going backwards here. All right, so you can click on the three dots once you find the assignment and copy the link. And um, then I go into Google Classroom and put that link there. So um, then the students are able to access that from, for example, um, that's how I do the question of the day. Um, their performance task, here's the AP exam review. I just posted the link in there. And so when they click on that, it takes them to this page, which is the review. And then they can go from there and um, do their questions or whatever has been assigned. So you're going to, on the assignment that on the topic that you want, I just copy the link and put the link in there versus um, specifically assigning but I assign in Google Classroom. So um, if that answered your question, I hope. Charnel, I think they asked about the supplemental materials too. Do you mind showing that again? Um, in, the, um, in the dashboard, I think when you go to the assignments tab and you scroll to the bottom, there should be, um, yeah, search for content. See that at the very bottom there? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, so I think someone was asking about, you know, where do I find that extra content on the actual um, full APCSP uh, course, whether it's JavaScript uh, in uh, Python or in cybersecurity, you're going to be able to see that content at, there at the bottom if you just simply click on that drop down. There we go. And so then we can um, it's not showing. You can actually get to supplemental content also from that add button over on the right hand side. And if you click on yep, code HS content and browse to the so there's a couple of places. Linda was definitely correct in that you could get it from the bottom of the page. You can also get it from here. Um, so if you wanted uh, the supplemental content, um, let's scroll back up, Charnel. 
go ahead and click on, uh, let's click on AP Computer Science Principles in JavaScript. And now if you scroll down here in this window, um, keep going down, you'll eventually see there's a ton of stuff. There you go. Here there's they all are. the supplemental modules here as well. So there's two places now, and I know that's, um, we, we used to have it where you could just get to those from that area that Linda was talking about, um, but now you can actually get to it from that add button as well. So really cool. So yeah, and if you oh, oh, go ahead. No, if you're brand new to Code HS, I was just thinking about this, Charnel, because I see that you have this uh, really cool course. It's a standalone review course. And so if you're brand new to Code HS tonight and you haven't used it at all and you want to use this, you know, for that May course or that May test, what you could do is you could create, you know, just a review section and then add um, maybe the supplemental materials for the performance task and then you have everything you need. So just an idea, throwing it out there. That's and a great idea. Here's what um, the search for content using the bottom of the screen that we were referring to earlier. I went into my class and this one is the principles in Python class and all of the assignments and everything, the units are above that. Here's the review, the final. And then here is the search for content button. If you didn't, um, couldn't remember to go to add, this is the one that's at the bottom. So here are all of those supplementals and here's where you can assign them and uh, preview them. And then you've got the extra code HS content at the bottom. Perfect. And I hope that helped. Um, another, just a quick uh, comment in chat. Erica mentioned that you can schedule the assignments and due dates and they will automatically go over to Google Classroom. Um, there are a couple of caveats with that. I believe that um, if you're going to be scheduling assignments and adding due dates in Code HS, that is actually a pro feature. And so if you have the pro access and pro tools, that is definitely something that you might be able to do. Otherwise, it's a little bit more of a manual process. I know I was one of those free teachers too, who often just posted links in Google Classroom, but that works really well. Um, but if you are a pro teacher, you do have access to those, um, those access controls. So you can schedule assignments, due dates, and all of that stuff and connect it up to Google Classroom that way. All right, other questions? Lori, we had a question about, is there a teacher dashboard for student responses for the question of the day? Mm -hmm. um, and actually, Linda, I'm not totally certain if there is a teacher dashboard for question of the day. I don't believe there is. I don't remember seeing any. Mm -hmm. um, here's the question of the day. You we see the score distribution for your course for that day, but um, it doesn't necessarily have a tracking. So. Um, hey, I'm so grateful you asked that question, though, because we uh, if we haven't thought of a feature that was uh, helpful to teachers, um, we want to go ahead and bring that back to our team and make sure that we add that as well. So thank you for bringing that up, Jana. Absolutely. We will definitely do that. This is a very, very new tool, very new feature for APCSP, so we're pretty excited about it. All right, other questions? Okay, looks like, oh, let's see. Um, let's see, so somebody got the question, question of the day wrong, and is there an explanation for each? Um, actually, Charnel, do you wanna go ahead and answer that wrong? Preferably. <laughs> uh, Don't get it right. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to guess here. Okay. There we go. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't look like we have explanations there, but we can certainly uh, uh, help with that if you've got questions about those. So yeah, and what I do is um, I don't put students on the spot, but if it is incorrect, then we'll put it up on the board. And then the students that got it correct, I have them explain 
what's going on with it. So that way um, they can hear it from another student's point versus a teacher point. I think that is a great strategy for that. Um, let me just take a quick look here. I thought I saw somebody else pop a question in. Um, so the really the assignment tools can ask um, about assigning assignments. Um, really, when you have the free version of Code HS, everything is simply available to students. When you have the pro version is when you can actually provide some access controls um, and actually maybe make something accessible to students or hide something um, in that way. So you can absolutely, students will still have access to all of the material on the free version. It's just a matter of providing a little bit more control on how students access that material. Um, let's see, Erica, I can do some checking on your question about Brython. Perfect. Um, down for APCSP. Let's see what else. Okay, and it looks like Linda answered that. Okay. Yeah, you can, um, Karen, you can either assign it as a separate course um, and assign, you know, just send out the link to all your students and then they have two sections, which is okay or you can add it to one course just um, in that kind of process that we showed you, um, just adding it from the top right, there's a button that says add, and then you can go code HS content, find the review course and add it that way. Sometimes that's easier for students just to be able to scroll. And it looks like uh, one of our uh, curriculum developers just answered about the Brython question. Uh, he mentioned we are looking to, thanks Dave, we are looking to add a little to Brython, but it is not intended to be a fully functioning graphics package. Yeah, we can do, um, Linda, are you prepared to just do another quick demo of how to add that quickly? And we can do that really quick in a minute or two that we have left, if that works. Yeah, um, I think I just need Chernel to. I can stop, stop share. share. Yep. There we go. I'm going to queue it up again here and just make sure I have the right screen. Oh, no problem. We're happy to demo that. And if you do have questions after this, know that we are definitely here to help. I'll throw our, um, actually, you'll get a follow up email from me and you can absolutely send any messages my way. Yeah, not a problem. So let me uh, real quick. So I am currently in my AP computer science principles and JavaScript course. Um, and these are all the modules and you've probably seen, you know, uh, the individual uh, modules and lessons. But if I go to add at the top right hand corner, you can uh, scroll down to code HS content. And um, there's uh, several different things you can do here. You can uh, go the route of choosing APCS principles and uh, adding those review materials from the additional content. And you can also um, search for the full review course, which is the separate course. Um, and you can see when it pops up there, I'm just gonna go ahead and select CSP. And I can either choose the different uh, types of questions or reviews that I want to import in. So maybe I only have uh, enough time for one uh, full, uh, exam and then maybe some reader question bank questions or I can just select them all and hit assign selected and now uh, my course is going to look a little long now because uh, I've added it twice but you can see if I scroll down here to the bottom there is my uh, computer science principles review and it includes uh, also the reader bank questions ended up up here because I moved them earlier so maybe it didn't copy over um, since I had previously done it but I have the option to move things up and down um, so if I want to, I can move things around. If you scroll back up, Karen, you can go to edit. 
um, and you can move these um, to any place. So if you'd like to put them, you know, right after their um, creative development of their CSP performance task, you can do that so that they can begin the review then instead of waiting until that final exam or after the post test, um, which doesn't seem too intuitive. So once you're done, you just hit done and your course is set to go and everything is that in that one course instead of having to have two separate sections, but two separate sections is okay too. Excellent. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, somebody else is asking about a way to get a credential to allow teachers to teach AP, CSP, or AP. Um, I think it probably depends on what your requirements are at the state level as well. Um, you know, we could try to get you some more information on that if you want to drop us a quick email about that. All right. So we are... I can hardly believe it, but we are at time for our for the close of our webinar. So definitely follow up with us uh, with either myself or Linda. I put both of our email addresses in there. Uh, you can also email uh, help at codehs.com as well. Um, but we are more than happy to help with any questions you might have. And we can definitely help you get directed to the right place if there's a question that we can't answer. So um, both Linda and I uh, have both been APCSP teachers, and so we're pretty excited about this topic. Um, so I just want to say again, thank you so much to Charnel Woolwich for joining us tonight. Charnel, this was great. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. Um, we so appreciate that. And uh, again, you'll receive a follow-up email uh, from us. Um, that should be for me tomorrow sometime, I believe. And uh, yeah, it should have all the links from tonight. It'll have the recording, the slides, all the links. Make sure to check that notes pane for all of the links if you don't see it on the slide. Thanks, everybody. Um, I am I'm appreciating all the love we're seeing in chat. <laughs> so we really appreciate that. Uh, we are all very passionate about Code HS. And uh, we're code HS teachers ourselves. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, totally forgot about the workshop survey. Linda just tossed the link for that into chat. So if you have a moment, go ahead and fill out that for us. We'd love to know what else we can bring you. So please take a moment to fill the workshop survey out, codehs.com slash workshop survey. And thank you all so much. We look forward to seeing you at the next Code HS workshop. Make sure to head out and check that out at codehs.com slash free PD. We will see you all soon. Bye, everybody.